Hey, hey, thank you for joining us. We are back for another amazing interview. Now, as you know, you will get the opportunity on these interviews to meet amazing people from our tribe. So make sure you set your notifications, come back same day, same time, every week, other than when the season is over and we're on a little break. Today, we have an amazing guest, Miss Michelle. Thank you for being with us, Michelle. How are you? Hey, I'm well. Thank you, Tony, for having me on. I'm well. Awesome. Awesome. I love the decor and the family pictures. And uh, you got to forgive me. I wish I had my lighting as nice as yours. <laughs> You're like a pro over there. So that's amazing. Well, first, I want to ask you a question I ask everybody is how did you bump into me online? So uh, I was going through a divorce, relationship issues. And I would hear your content and my friends would forward me your information. So I'd listen to it. And I was like, yeah, I could relate to him. I get it. <laughs> so your friends and were looking out for you. They were. I was going through a rough patch and it was like, listen to this guy. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. That's amazing. That, it's just amazing how the world is so interconnected and how we bump into each other and we meet who we need when we need them. And so that's, and I'm, I'm glad that you're still here. I'm assuming the divorce, has it finalized or? Yes. And I've been divorced for about six years now. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Have you been? I've been rocking with you for a long time. Long, okay. Long. <laughs> that's what I, that's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. I mean, it's always great to meet everybody. Some, some people I meet, it's been six months, you know, it's been a year, but when when I like to hear those two, three, four, five years, because it just shows that we're on the same page, you know, same wavelength and trying to grow and get better. So I love that. Now, where are you located? I live in the Bryan College Station area in Texas. So. Okay. Now, I have not. What what college is it near? Texas A&M, home of Texas A&M. Okay. okay. <laughs> now, I have heard of Texas A&M because... Is that um that Patrick Mahomes? I don't know if you know any of their star players that come out of there or on the football side. I feel like y'all have had some pretty big names come out of there. Is it like a maroon or a burgundy color? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yeah. They bleed Texas A&M here. I'm originally from New York, so. Okay. I just, uh, I've tried to immerse myself into the culture, but I'm like, uh, I try, I try. Right. Now, what, what city in New York are you from? I'm originally from Brooklyn. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm a straight New Yorker, but. <laughs> <laughs> so you could do the New York accent up there. And the Caribbean accent as well. My family is Jamaican and Guyanese. So, yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> wow. So you, so you got a nice mix, a lot of culture, kind yes. of seen it all. Now, out of, have you visited where your family is from in the islands? Yes, yeah, so I've been to Jamaica a number of times, but Guyana, I have not. There's just been a lot of turmoil over there, so it's just not safe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, from Jamaica, Brooklyn, and where you are in Texas, mm -hmm. which has the most you know, flavor and style for you? Well, I love New York. I do, but I, I have kids, and so I think Texas was probably like the best place to raise a family. Oh. Uh, New York has a lot of culture, diversity, um, but I'm about that home life now. I'm, I'm, I'm grown. <laughs> so. I see. That's amazing. So now tell me, tell us about yourself and like what you do and that purpose work, the things you're working on. Yeah. So I go by Coach Michelle A. Just because my name is so popular, there's like a thousand Michelle Thomases out there. Okay. So I go by Coach Michelle A., um, originally I started out just in ministry with my ex-husband at the time. And I was listen, I was happy just being the supportive wife. Okay. <laughs> That's all I wanted to do. Uh, but then my marriage ended and things fell apart. And in the process of that, God pulled so many talents out of me, I didn't even know it was there. And so I began writing, I began public speaking, coaching, podcasts, like so much came out of me. So um, I have two children. I have a 21-year-old and a 13-year-old. So, Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Now, 
I know people be in the comments asking you about your skincare routine and all of that because you, you definitely don't look like you have a 21 year old. Listen, you know, good black don't crack. <laughs> right. That's amazing. That's amazing. So now what, how soon did you get started after your divorce? Like what was the process of building up the courage to use your gift? Okay. So I'm going to give you a little background story of what happened and how everything unfolded because we were in ministry and the goal was to come to Texas to advance the gospel. That was our mandate, okay? Uh, in the process of that, uh, my ex-husband had an affair and it was a very public affair um, because it turned into a huge scandal where the FBI showed up. It was all over the front page of the paper, the news. It was a, it was a hot mess, okay? And so I was really just trying to keep my head above water and I was working, just trying to keep the family together and I had some time apart to just kind of get my mind together. And I bumped into someone from another ministry, started going there. And they asked me, say, hey, would you be interested in coming on stage and telling your story? And I got to share my story with a thousand women. Okay. <laughs> I got off the stage and there was a line of women just wanting to talk and connect because they were going through their own personal tragedy too. And I was just like... Okay, God, I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> and that's how it came about. Um, it was just really a call to just share my story. And I didn't realize it was going to affect so many people. And so I decided to write my book, When Scandal Comes Home. Hold on. There's the flag. Awesome. It's a book um, and it's also a workbook. And so I started doing coaching from there, public speaking. And like God just opened up doors in the middle of like a hot mess. So he'll do it for you. Mm, wow. Now, what did you learn for the people who are married, you know, the process of the affair and when scandal came home, what were some of the lessons you learned about marriage and how it can suddenly fall apart? And, you know, what could be done possibly to, you know, be watching those red flags and to try to prevent it if you can? So uh, this one, we definitely tried to prevent because uh, you got to read the book because God gave me a dream about it. And I'm telling you, he will warn you. <laughs> and he gave me a dream about it happening. And so we were praying against it, praying against it. But one of the things that I learned, and this took me years to get there because I was very angry at God. And even though God did not force this, he didn't cause this, but I was really angry um, because I wanted everything to stop. I wanted to save my marriage and my family. And one day God just spoke to me and he says, I have given free will and I will not take it away. And that cut me because I wanted God to take away uh, my ex-husband's free will so he wouldn't cheat. And in the process of that, God was just revealing all the roadblocks that he set up to prevent him from doing this thing but he was determined. And I had to learn that people have free will and they choose to do what they want to do. And I had to accept that. And that was a hard lesson because I wanted things to go my way. I wanted the husband, the wife, the two kids and the dog. We live in the suburbs, beautiful home. I wanted that lifestyle. And we were serving in ministry and we were like the cutest little couple. But guess what? I can't force my will on someone else, no matter how much I love them and no matter how much I try. Mm, that is ocean deep. It's it, it, so many layers to it and it goes so much deeper than, you know, of course we can go here, but I know the people who heard that can just sit and let that minister to them for the next hour. Cause mm -hmm. that says a lot. That says a lot. And you're, you're so right about, how God will warn you. Mm -hmm. Like when something is off in our life, in our relationship, and it could be a friendship, we'll have that that tug, just the, the Holy Spirit kind of whispering to you, like, hey, look into this, you know, mm -hmm. see what's going on. And you said something else that really hit me is a lot of women probably were envious of you mm -hmm. when you were married and in ministry and looking at your husband and they probably 
started to, you know, bash their boyfriend or their husband because he wasn't like what your husband appeared to be. Yeah. And I see that a lot where people are idolizing and putting couples on a pedestal mm -hmm. because of how they look and not realizing that we all have to go home and do the work. Mm -hmm. And that that's a lesson in itself. Now, of your work with the book, with the coaching, like what, what all services do you provide? So I do the life coaching. I do speaking engagements across the country. Um, I also have my podcast and I do retreats as well, too, because I love just serving. And then I do small workshops here and there as well. OK. Have you started building on social media yet? I have. And I'm trying to grow my YouTube channel more. Um, and then I'm, I do well on TikTok. I, I always say, are you ready for ministry? Uh, just because... Um, Sometimes people assume ministry is just knowing the Bible. And that's not what get people caught up, okay? It's those small foxes that spoil the vine. It's the small little things in our character, in our thinking that can really deter us. And so I try to warn them about, I said, are you ready for this? Okay, it's not just having on a suit and getting a microphone. It's not about the notoriety and the popularity. Y'all, that stuff is dangerous if you touch it, okay? And you're not equipped. It, it affects generations. And so one of the things that I really try to warn people about, like, is just protecting yourself and your mindset. Don't let anyone idolize you. Okay. Remember, you have flaws like everyone else because the fall is great. Okay. <laughs> I'm telling you someone that has experienced that. And a lot of times, like when you build up these platforms and then you have that hit and people are talking about you all over, like to have something run across the front page of the paper, you're like, man. Oh, God. Oh, it was like it was an affair that I couldn't even hide. You know, like sometimes couples go through things and they have the privacy to say, OK, it's my husband, me and the mistress. OK, we can cover this. OK, we have. I didn't have that luxury. OK, <laughs> it was all over the news. So you had to deal with that shame. And like, how do you pick your face back up? How do you minister to your kids that can read that their dad is on the front page of the paper? Right. Like, how do you keep your just your mind together and not lose it and not become bitter and retaliate? There's a there's a huge process behind that that we don't talk about. OK, <laughs> so I try to warn people and have those real transparent conversations. And sometimes we can even get to the point where we're angry at God. And I can tell you I was there. So, like, how can you recover from this? You can. You can do it with a smile. You can do it with laughter. And you can do it with a team, okay? So I always encourage people to find your tribe and there's people that'll look out for you. Mm. One of the things I love that you came into the revelation of is that God is perfect and can do no wrong. That's right. And that we have that free will. That's, that's powerful. And that says a whole lot because... I hear people say that a lot. I do hear it a lot in coaching and talking to people. I hear I was mad with God. I've never understood it personally because I, I've never gone through anything to where I felt that I could be mad with God. I, I could understand it like when people lose someone they really love, like to death, like if if someone loses a child or they lose their spouse and they die out of nowhere or something or a very tragic death, I could understand it there and I've heard it there. And I have heard it where you're talking about, but never really understood it. But to hear you articulate it, it makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people have that same feeling. So that's what I'm most proud of, that you were able to kind of heal your heart. Mm -hmm. And stop blaming God, stop being mad with God. So then he can usher you into your calling and your purpose. And that's a beautiful thing. Now, in coaching, do you do one-on-one -on -one sessions? Like, are you open and willing to do one-on-one -on -one sessions? I prefer one-on-one -on -one sessions. I know there are a lot of people that do the group coaching. I like one-on-one -on -one sessions because I like to get down to the heart of the matter. And there are things that people are not willing to say publicly in front of a small group, even though they like the people that they're there with. 
Like for someone to acknowledge that they were mad at God. Well, you're a Christian. How can you be mad at God? You know, you feel that condemnation. So you might, you know, draw back. And I never want anyone to put on a church face with me. I can pick up on that. I've been in ministry too long. I can tell when you just saying church stuff. Okay. I want you to be real. I want you to be transparent with me. And there's a no judgment zone because I truly understand, especially when you have been someone that have been working in ministry. Sometimes we feel like God owes us, right? He owes us this perfect marriage. Hey, I'm working for you, God, right? We have that spirit and God had to humble me. I took some correction, okay? <laughs> and God would not let me go. And this is the beauty of it. So I do love the one-on-one -on -one coaching because I'm just like, let's talk about it. Let's bring that stuff out. Mm. And I know the readers are going to get your book. I'm not a big reader, I'm, I'm, ironically, because I'm a writer. But I know the readers are going to get your book and really you know, dive into it and get the lessons. And in there... I've I've heard about the stages of grief. I don't know if it's the seven stages of grief or whatever it may be. I'm not sure if you've ever looked it up, but mm -hmm. do you know from what you've heard about the stages of grief, does that relate to overcoming an affair and a divorce? Yes, absolutely. There's an acceptance phase. Um, and I think one of the hardest things is just that you have to accept that uh, the life you envisioned is no longer here. And that's a hard one for people to accept, like, okay, what's going to be the new normal? You're a single mom now. You never planned on being a single mom. You were married for so many years. Um, acceptance is probably the hardest phase. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's good. And what I would also say, if there are stages of grief that are different from the stages of healing mm -hmm. after a divorce or public scandal uh, I, I want to challenge you to find those and mm -hmm. define them because that I feel like a lot of times most people won't correlate the two of like because when we, when we think of grief we think of losing a loved one to death yeah. but I don't think a lot of people look at those stages of grief when they're going through a divorce or they're going or they've been cheated on. Right. So I believe God will take in birth in someone like you, that revelation that can carry people, which you do naturally in your coaching and things like that. And I'm sure some of that is in the book as well. So yeah. And uh, we're going to talk about that at our next retreat. Uh, so we're going to have a section on grief. So I have someone coming in teaching about that. So yes, we will definitely talk. About that. When you say retreat, do you mean like vacation, like going away or like a seminar at a place? So I do retreats every year, three days, two nights, all inclusive retreats. We take care of business. This is not an Instagram Facebook, TikTok retreat. This is where you come with your ponytail and sweats on and take care of business, okay? We go down to the deep stuff. I bring on, and it's just not me, I bring on credential individuals that'll come in and teach in different areas. And one of the areas we're going to talk about is grief. Because mm. sometimes we're not grieving the life that we thought we were going to have. And sometimes that's when we get stuck in our thoughts and our patterns uh, because we will not accept, okay, we got to grieve. Grieve correctly. Let it out. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And the is the next one is it scheduled already? And is yes. it full or yeah. space in it? There's room. I still have one more house that I'd like to fill. It's June 21st to the 23rd. It's going to be in Round Top, Texas. It's all inclusive. Like I said, you just pay to get there. We'll pick you up from the airport if you're flying in. We'll take care of your meals. We, I mean, my retreats, I really do pour into people because it really matters to me. It's one of those things. My desire in life is to own a retreat center. So I've got to work it up. So right now I can only, you know, utilize someone's space, but it's a great retreat. It's life-changing. It really is. Mm. Yeah. I've, I've never thought about what a retreat center looks like. And mm. I have this 10 acres of land in Florida which is kind of like a Texas type thing too. It's in Live Oak, Florida. And I've been thinking about doing a retreat center, but not necessarily like a retreat. I was thinking like a kind of get away and unwind type 
silence type thing by yourself. But when you say that, I might need to let you design it on my land. And um, that's amazing to be able to do. Now, the next one, the next retreat, when you say one more house to fill up, what do you mean by house? So the facility that we have, there's three homes on there. And so um, each home has five bedrooms, no, six bedrooms, six bathrooms in it. And so we fill up and so we do double occupancy. And so when I tell uh, talk about the retreat center, I have one other home that I can get about 10 other women in there. So I'm pretty excited just to fill it up and have them come in. Um, beautiful home. It's well kept. It's really a great place. Mm. And so the thing about it is, and I love doing retreats because sometimes, and people are not really transparent about this. You just want to run away. Okay. Sometimes when you get hit hard, you're like, man, I wish I could run away. I got a spot for you to run away to for a weekend, right? We're going to build you back up so you can face your life. So that's what we do at these retreats. Mm. We give you the opportunity. We give you the tools you need to get back out there. We get it. Sometimes you want to run. It gets hard out here. Mm. And how do you eat? Like, what you got a shelf or y'all cooking? We do. I ha I hire someone that comes on and prepares the food. So we have a chef on staff. Yes. Wow. That is amazing. And you say June 21st? To the 23rd. It's going to be in Round Top, Texas. It's a tiny, tiny town. Okay. They don't even have a stoplight. Okay. That's how tiny it is. It's out in the country. And we really, we unplug. Okay, we, the uh, facility, I think it's about, how many acres is it? It's about 44 acres. Mm -hmm. So it's a large, and it has a prayer trail as well, too, where you can walk through and just pray. There's a pond on the facility. It's beautiful. It's a little hallmark town. That's what I call it. Just a, It's just a pretty little place. That's amazing. It sounds like Texas is doing you very well. It is. And that's amazing. Now, where can people get in touch with you? So I have a number of places that they can reach me. You can go to my website. It's called IamMichelleA.com. You can find me there. You can also find me on uh, WhenScandalComesHome.com. That's the name of the book. <laughs> okay, you can find it there. Um, if you're interested in going to the retreats, CodHouseRetreats.com. And it's C O D. H-O-U-S-E, retreats, R-E-T-R-E-A-T-S, retreats.com. Um, and it stands for Christ, our deliverer, okay? <laughs> and so it's a place where we come on and just unplug and take care of business. So you can find me on multiple platforms on Facebook, um, Instagram, and TikTok. I'm Coach Michelle A. So look for me there. And then, of course, check out my podcast, Lost Light and Laughter. You can find me. Listen, you can find me. If you're looking for me, you can find me. My I mean, podcast. Do you, do you, do you, okay, Lost Light and Laughter. Okay, awesome. Yes. It's an inspirational perfect. show about laughter after tragedy. So I interview guests on three things. One, a significant loss that you've experienced. And it could be any type of loss. It could be the death of a loved one. I had a show on the loss of good credit. That's a major loss, okay? The loss of friendships, the loss of identity, the loss of childhood. So I interview them on a significant loss. The second is the light. God represents the light. Where's God in all of this loss? What are you praying? What is he speaking to you? How do you feel about God? Are you still in a relationship? We talk about God and then laughter. When is the first time you remember laughing after the loss? So we get all the all the negative stuff out there, but then we leave you with laughter because I believe laughter is the best medicine. So you can come back after a hard hit and laugh and be jo jovial. You don't have to be bitter. And that's what I encourage people to do. So mm -hmm. Now, I love what you're doing. That is amazing. And I know you're going to have a flood of people, you know, coming to join a retreat. Now, do you mind if I do my men's retreat out there? Okay, so here's the thing. It's really a girly place. It, it is, is. It's so like pink pretty. and it's pink and yes, it is so girly. It is. It's just for women. It's very dainty. Okay, really? <laughs> it is okay. beautiful. Because um, I'm looking so for somewhere for a men's retreat that sound like that. Maybe I might have to create it. You go 
don't have to because I actually have a number of men that want to come on the property. And we have a small facility for the men, but uh, I, I lots of men want to come out, but it's just it's just not equipped. It's just not. And so I don't want to, you know, take someone's money and then they come disappointed. But ladies, if you like pretty, come on. OK, <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, well, uh, I know everybody's going to look it up and I know we're going to fill up those other 10 spots. So that is amazing. And I'm really thankful for you to turn that pain into purpose and your story for God's glory and just getting up and getting out because it's a lot of people with a story mm -hmm. that others can benefit from but they they're afraid mm -hmm. and so i also encourage you to in with the coaching and all of those things keep encouraging other women to tell their story and helping them as an author consultant as a business consultant so what i'm going to say for michelle is if you have gone through a divorce, you've gone through a scandal or been cheated on or you rebuilding and you want to write your book or start your podcast or your YouTube or your retreat ministry, also reach out to Michelle as a business consultant and let her help you with a blueprint. So because we need as many voices because everybody going to have a different tribe, a different audience. Mm -hmm. And we need as many people to stand up and learn how to do it and get out there and get on the front line. So thank you so much, Michelle, for what you're doing and for joining us on this interview series. And I'm hoping that we hear from you again. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I truly appreciate it. Thank y'all. Awesome, thank you. Now to everybody watching, make sure you watch this two or three times, just like the other ones. Set your notification bell and catch us the same day, the same time every week. God bless and we'll talk soon.